Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning, 73-year-old man injured in St. Andrew gun attack. A 73-year-old man was shot and injured during a gun attack on Omara Road, St. Andrew, on Wednesday night. The elderly man, a carpenter, was shot when a gunman opened a fire on him and another man on a section of the roadway. The other man escaped the injuries, the police said. Reports are that around 7 p.m., both men were on Omara Road when they were punched upon by another man traveling on foot and armed with a handgun. The gunman, the police said, opened a gunfire, hitting the elderly man in his right hand before escaping on foot. The injured man was rushed by residents to the hospital for treatment. No motive has been established for the attack, the police said. Sister and the stepfather charged with a relative's murder in Westmoreland. The Westmoreland police have laid murder charges against the sister and her stepfather, who are alleged to have killed 38-year-old liberal Alwyn Beckford. Beckford was reportedly hit with a stone during a confrontation with his relatives on Monday at Hertford in Petersfield in the parish. He later succumbed to his injuries. Charged are 62-year-old Royston Dennis, otherwise called a shot, and Beckford's sister, 24-year-old Sherika Dennis, otherwise called Rika. According to a well-placed police source, the two were charged after a witness statement following a question-and-answer session. Another sister, who was also allegedly involved in the dispute, a 17-year-old, is expected to be charged today. Reports from the police indicate that Beckford was at home with his fiancée when an argument developed between him and one of his sisters. During the argument, it is alleged that the three family members, including his sisters, began hurling stones at the Beckford, one of which reportedly hit him on the left side of his head, causing a wound that bled profusely. Beckford later collapsed and was rushed to the Savannah Lamar Public General Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Mother pleads for safe return of missing teacher. The last five days have been very distressing for Denise Anglin, who is desperately hanging on to the hope that her daughter, 29-year-old Daniel Anglin, will return home alive. Daniel, a grade 4 teacher at the St. Peter Cleaver Primary School in Kingston, has been missing since Monday when she left their home on Sun Drive in Helsha St. Catherine for work. Denise said she became concerned when her daughter, who usually alerts her when she is about to leave the school, did not call. As it got later, she began fearing the worst. I couldn't sleep. I sat up until 4 o'clock in the morning, she said. The following morning, she was informed that Daniel, who she described as a dedicated teacher, did not turn up for work. Her husband, Michael Anglin, filed a missing person report. On the morning Daniel went missing, her mother said she was running late for work. She said her daughter usually takes the bus from Nagahead to work and a taxi up to their house that they have been living in for the last three months. But that morning, Denise said she heard she was picked up by a taxi that she had used at least two times before. I want back my daughter alive, anything it costs. May I see her alive? The anxious mother said before breaking down in tears. The mother of four said, Daniel is our only daughter, and they have a close-knit relationship. Just the last week Monday, Daniel celebrated her birthday, and two days later, she was showered with gifts from her students as they celebrated her on Teacher's Day. She said her daughter was not involved in a romantic relationship. I don't know nothing that went wrong, and I don't know what is the reason because Daniel and I have a very good relationship. So is our father. Everywhere is me and Daniel, everywhere, she said. From Monday till now, me can't see my daughter. My daughter is always with me. She's a good behaving girl. My daughter doesn't have a boyfriend at that age. That's why I feel it more say if them rape her, she said. A retired teacher, Denise, said that Daniel was keen to follow in her footsteps to help mold the minds of the nation's children. She used to go when I am teaching and come visit the school. I am an example. That was her writing when she said I would like to be a teacher. She watched our mother and our mother is a dynamic teacher, she said. A despairing Denise said the anguish of not knowing whether her daughter is alive is crippling. It's terrible, terrible. Me cry, me cry, me cry. Last night was the most time that I cried. 
and my husband helped me and said, don't bother break down because you were trying to keep up. Reports from the Hellshire Police are that Aglin was last seen at home about 5.50 a.m. Monday. All efforts to contact her since have been futile. The police are encouraging anyone who may know where she is to contact them. Meanwhile, President of the Jamaica Teachers Association, Linton Johnson, said the organization is distraught at Daniel's disappearance and is pleading with the public to provide any information that could assist with her safe return home to the police. He said the school community is traumatized and is doing their part to assist. These are very anxious moments for the school, both the staff and the colleagues and the students alike. The school community has been dismissing early with a view of providing some support to the family members, whatever information they can ascertain to give to the police, he said. At this juncture, we really have to keep hope alive. We really hope and trust that she is safe, she is okay, wherever she is, Johnson added. Government urged it to remove clause that allows it to terminate mentally ill employees. The Union of Clerical Administrative and Supervisory Employees has called for the government to remove from all employment contracts a clause which gives it the right to dismiss without a notice any government employee who becomes mentally ill while on the job. The union is also urging the private sector to take the same approach. In a statement to Thursday, UK's General Secretary John Levy described the clause as outdated, backward and discriminatory. We, we at the UK have examined the issue surrounding this particular employment clause, which makes it clear that an organization can terminate you without notice and without payment in lieu of notice if you become of unsound mind. We see that clause as one which is offensive. It doesn't belong in today's modern world. And quite frankly, it should be removed. We believe that it is time now for this kind of abusive clause to be removed from the workplace and especially the government contracts that has in this very offensive clause. Quite frankly, this clause is an unsound one and its life should come to an end quickly and we can start the discussion surrounding how we treat with these matters. Keith Clark murder trial adjourned until Monday. The trial of the three soldiers charged with the 2010 murder of Keith Clark has been adjourned until Monday to allow for the finalizing of agreed documents between the defense and the prosecution. On Wednesday, the proceedings adjourned early for both parties to finalize the documents. But when the matter resumed Thursday morning in the Home Circuit Court, the prosecutor told Justice Dale Palmer that they have made some progress. However, additional time was needed to finalize an additional document. The proceedings were subsequently adjourned. Lance Corporals Greg Tinglin, Adele Buckley and Private Arnold Henry were charged with murder in 2012 following a ruling from the Director of Public Prosecutions. The prosecution is alleging that three soldiers killed the accountant at his Kirkland Heights home on March 27, 2010. Man killed during reported confrontation with soldiers in Denham Town a man was fatally shot during a reported confrontation with members of the military in Denham Town, West Kingston on Wednesday night. An illegal gun was reported deceased in the incident. The dead man has been identified as 28-year-old Romaine King, a resident of Golden Heights. About 9.15 p.m., members of the military were on patrol along Racecourse Lane when they observed the King and another man standing along a pathway dressed in hoodies. It is reported that a king pointed a gun at the soldiers and was shot. A 9mm pistol was seized. The other man escaped. The Independent Commission of Investigations is probing the incident.